So uh, we have our first keynote speaker. We have Lisa Honnold. She is the development director from British Embassy in Nepal. And Lisa will be speaking on her experience of being a woman in this field and what it means to value data. So Lisa, I welcome you. Thank you very much. It's great to be here today. Um, this is one conference I was really very keen to, to join. Um, and it's great that we managed to get this conference together as well, uh, organised by the um, uh, uh, Data for Development team in partnership with Girls in Tech, Women Leaders in Technology, Women in STEM and Open Knowledge Nepal. So fantastic achievement. Good to see as well, lots of interest from lots of different diverse backgrounds. But I think before we kick off the day, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, why I think women working in data and technology is really important. I think my main point and one that I have always um, uh, concluded throughout my career is that women must have a voice in data. That it's all about women participating and participating at a senior level and so that they can drive the supply and create the demand for data. So why? Do I think that? Well, I think, and I know I'm teaching people who already know this, but there are many people in the pool that don't. So why is because women have different perspectives, don't we? We interpret things differently. We can spot gaps and we can fill them for policymakers. And we need women in those policymaking uh, roles in order to use that data and then give, it, give women in the population a voice. So for me, it's all about the voice of women across all of the structures. I know you all know the statistics around women's participation in the economy and society here in Nepal, so I'm not gonna go through them. But what I want to talk about is something that I've experienced during my time here, along with everybody else, and that is the COVID pandemic. Now, when it first hit, the gov I, my sense is the government actually did pretty well in terms of data. Um, it went into, we went into lockdown and the data seemed quite robust in terms of the numbers of cases and sex disaggregation. But for me, there was no analysis behind that by the government of those women that were being affected. Who were they? How was the pandemic um, affecting them? And when I look back on uh, what we did, yes, development partners did their own analysis and shared it with the government. But it was development partners that then stepped in with various interventions spe specifically for women. Then moving forward subsequently we know the evidence showed that the, the impact of that lockdown that more women than men lost their jobs they lost their income they faced gender-based violence particularly during lockdown they shouldered the burden at home their children didn't go to school and now we know many girls are not going to return to school their mental health suffered in addition, um, women made up a majority of the healthcare workforce. So we have learned that they are at higher risk of infection. But the policy from government 
in my view, was limited for women because the data didn't go far enough. So if I now fast forward to today, now in March, how does that data look? Well, uh, I checked this morning, 276,000 cases, sadly 3,015 deaths and 107 cases reported yesterday. But I would say we know that data doesn't reflect the entire picture. How do I know that? Well, because my organization supported WHO last October to do a zero prevalence study. And for those of you like me that aren't health specialists, that uh, sees how, how, um, the, how many people have got the antibodies. Um, and from there, you can extrapolate what the numbers of cases actually were. So this is last October. This information was made public and the number was 4 million. 4 million Nepalis at that time had or had had COVID as opposed to the data that we, uh, we know now. There's a, another st study will be done like that. The cur as I say, the current figure is 276,000. What's that going to be when we do another one of these zero prevalence studies? Who can tell? But the numbers don't add up. The, so therefore the policies are inappropriate and people are basing their behavior on incorrect data. Given that we know women are adversely affected by the pandemic, that poor data can only increase the impact of the pandemic on women. So that's my experience of actually data which has skewed the impact on women. So of course then what's the solution? I would say two things. I feel senior women must be in government and they must voice their demand for data as it affects women. They must be able to then interpret it and use it to change policies. So for this, uh, these remarks, I actually Googled this morning, Nepal, Ministry of Health and Population, COVID and women. And I got a hit on the first three. And then you know how Google says missing and then it crosses out women. So that's, the, that's what I got. And I think that says quite a lot about the government policies towards women. So I think the first thing, solution, let's get more women who can understand and interpret and demand better data. But secondly, we need an army of women data specialists who can spot gaps and give these senior women what they need. And that's where this conference is so important because the army is here. So we need to start mobilizing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa, for the reflection. Uh, before we